Hello there, welcome to another episode of Fort Triumph with Ungainy Titan, and this is, again, issues that I have with the game, but they're not uh, big issues, they're not like last week's episode where I was dealing with, or talking about stuff that I thought were major issues with the game, um, issues that affected, I think, the game's viability, and I thought that prompted an interesting and useful discussion with the development team um, on the whole topic. And I sort of await developments and I look forward to more and I may have more thoughts on some of the bigger issues again in the future. But this is more things that I'd like, um, minor things, but things that I think would improve the experience for me anyway. Um, none of them I would regard as terribly high priority, but some of them are just little niggles that I find annoying and some things that I just would like to see. So a bit like um, the old detective series Columbo when he used to um, finish an interview and then he'd let the guy go and he managed to take two or three steps out of the room. He'd come back with one more thing um, that he didn't understand or he wanted more clarification on. Well, I'm a bit like this now with the development team, so I want one more thing. Well, there's more than one more thing, but there's a few things. Uh, the first thing is the party and inventory in combat. Personally, I would like that the option, at least before the first move, of accessing the party and inventory to redistribute potions. But I wouldn't re I'm not really bothered that it's not available. It bothers me more that the button is on the screen. If the whole thing is unavailable and I can't use it, then please take the button off the screen, because there's no need for it. The level up system opens up the party and inventory sheet anyway. Uh, it doesn't give me access to the inventory side of it. Or rather, it gives me access, but I can't do anything with it. Uh, and I can only affect the um, character that requires level up. That said, there's also an issue with that in that if I level up a character, the um, turn order does not automatically roll over to the next character on the list. I will probably get back to this later. There will be a bit of a rambling and back and forth on this thing, so bear with me, please. So one of the things that I wanted to do when I was playing um, this version, well, I, was, I said I'd play, I was going to use initially the video, some of the video I'd left over from last week's video, the, um, the counter combats, but I thought I'd actually play it fresh because I wanted to check that there was nothing new um, after being deployed. There was no update or anything like that. There doesn't appear to be, it's the same version number at any rate, and there's nothing on Steam to indicate there's been any update. But I did notice some behavioural differences, and I don't know if these are meant to be, or if they are bugs. But the effect of the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which is specifically the charge skill, and the whole business of character skills, and the levelling up process, and things like that. Um, so... One of the things that I've been thinking about is that the charge, in my own opinion anyway, the charge strikes me as very situational and um, to be of much use, because it doesn't do any damage, it isn't supposed to do any damage, at least by default, and um, it does eventually, I think, if you go up high enough on the charge um, skills, the different um, levels of it. So your character is leveled up high enough, you will do some damage on the charge, but it's not designed to do damage, it's more removes cover and causes things to move, uh, which means that you really need to have stuff set up so that there's somebody there to either make it an opportunity attack or a um, an overwatch attack when something moves. And then I noticed this happening. Um, I kicked the critter. And instead of the critter bouncing over and sliding into the other guy and bouncing him off the wall and everybody being stunned, he died. Now, I'd rather if he actually didn't die there and stunned both of them. Because that essentially takes an action, out, uh, two actions out of the game. It takes away attacks that um, would otherwise be made. And... It reduces it to essentially a weapon attack, and I could make the weapon attack for more damage, more reliably. Uh, so I'd rather the kick to actually kick and move things. Uh, I've also had a couple of incidents where I hit uh, boxes and destroyed a box or destroyed a rock and didn't actually move the rock, or um, and it didn't affect the creature on the other side of it. 
So I'd rather the kick to be definite movement and the opportunity for stunning rather than um, a damage dealer. So I'd rather reliable movement with unreliable damage uh, or even no damage than unreliable movement. That's just my own thing. But that gets me back to the charge. Now, because there are three, it three or four options to level up charge, there's obviously the developers think that has got a lot of utility. Um, I didn't kind of see it, and um, or at least like I said, without a certain setup. And what was I going to say? The charge, um, but it's possible that there's utility in the charge that I'm also missing. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time that I've been completely oblivious to options and capabilities in a game. Um, and gone for a long time being oblivious to options and capabilities in the game. I'm mean, old and crap and I do stuff like that. And to be honest with you, I did stuff when I wasn't old and crap as well. Um, I can get a bit single-minded and one uh, set, should we say, or uh, fixated on the way things are happening, the way I'm expecting things to happen without necessarily looking or examining all the possibilities. But if the charge is, as I think, best used, so we say, last, so that you set everybody up to take advantage of the fact that you're going to make a charge um, and to react on the force movement or the disappearance of cover or both, um, it would be nice to be able to change the turn order of your party. The sequence in which each party member uh, activates so that I could make Ruby say, last in a particular combat because I want to make use of charge because of the way the environment is set up or the number of enemies or whatever um, rather than having her go first and then having to manually uh, shift the combat around by selecting each character manually that I could just set it up for the, the whole uh, battle in the way I want it for that particular battle not a big deal and not essential, but it would be a nice to have. Um, it would also be nice, I said, like I said, if you do the level up, but it automatically moves on to the next character in the initiative order. As distinct from just stopping and you have to um, go and manually select the next character in the initiative order anyway. Um, so let's see, I've written this stuff down because I would forget or I'd be repeating myself rambling around the place so we've covered inventory kick charge initiative abilities um, when we're on the business of charge I just want to quick comment on the whole abilities thing of the, I think the current direction is good it's better than the original um, direction of fixed limited abilities but I think it should be expanded further um, I think there should be more than one possible build for each character so that you could um, um i don't know exactly what would be optimal but like for instance you could have maybe the ranger as a dps or mob control or the wizard as area damage or again mob control stuff like that uh, or moving environmental effects or changing environmental effects or but it'd be either or, you pick one or the other, or maybe hybrids. But in conjunction with that, and even in the current system, particularly at lower levels, because it, as you get to the high levels, you potentially have, you'll finish up with pretty much every skill that's of currently available. will finish up on your toolbar as available to you, at least at some level. You mightn't have it maxed out, but you'll have it. Um, I think that it would be... Um, interesting and big addition big uh, attraction to the game if you had optional variable builds for the different characters uh, where you choose between one type one direction or another or mix and match depending on how it is but you there's certain trades off you can't you could take a skill of a particular type but you can take say a physical skill of a particular type but you can't take the other path because you've taken one not the other um a bit like the way it's done in um, actually in XCOM where you you know you go down you have two sides so you, for instance if you're um, what do they call them the, the guys with uh, the support guys 
you can take um, heals or you can take um, stimulants and smoke and that sort of stuff. Um, a bit like that with this. Um, so you have a trade-off between one side and another, but the other side of that is an, uh, is a rebuild that you either can rebuild at will or if the developers prefer and think it might be more interesting i mean i would have no problem with having to spend a resource like magic to rebuild a character but it would be useful i think to rebuild a character even as it stands even as it still stand i think it would be very useful to be able to rebuild a character particularly at the intermediate levels when you're three or four levels in the skill you've chosen to build mightn't be the optimal uh, for your playstyle, and uh, like me in the charge, uh, so it might have been better off taking some one of the other skills instead, or maybe the fireball wasn't the one I should have taken. I should have taken the other one. Uh, that sort of thing. So um, yes, the option to rebuild a character I think would be a very very useful addition, and. It's all there, so I wouldn't see it as an impossible thing to implement uh, or very difficult to implement, but I think it would be a very, a very useful addition to the game. I know the expanded skill tree and the uh, idea of trade offs has actually been mentioned by other people on the forums as well. So I'm not alone, I think, on that particular uh, desire, um, but I think if you did go down that route, especially uh, a rebuild, I think it would be essential because. There would obviously be suboptimal builds and or builds that just didn't suit the way a particular person played the game and I think um, some kind of rebuild system would then be very very useful. So kind of finally the thing I wanted to look at really is um, the final thing I wanted to ask about that kind of annoys me a little bit is the smoke bomb. Um, I don't have any problem with what the smoke bomb does. But I would like to see, as far as I can tell, um, I don't know if it blocks line of sight. I'm not 100% sure whether it blocks line of sight. And the other thing is I'd like to see a persistent smoke effect for the duration that it lasts. Because it just seems to appear and disappear. And uh, I'm not too sure, you know, whether it's still there or how long it lasts for, you know, it just, um, I find it a little bit confusing. And I've never noticed it to make any actual difference. Um, I've dropped out the smoke bombs a few times, but I've never seen it. It never seems to have any positive effect. And mostly, I suppose, I wouldn't expect it to have a melee units, but at the very least, I think you should be able to block line of sight. Um, and I should be able to put down a smoke bomb and sort of run away from behind it. Um, put down a smoke bomb between me and archers, not just in the, the square the archers are in or whatever um, that's just my opinion and I think it should persist for a little bit and I should be able to see where it is so that I can make use of it because it just uh, it appears if it's just a single tile um, I think it should be a bit bigger than a single tile as well but otherwise it's a bit um, useless and I would have picked a different skill and that will bring you back to the character rebuilding as well, because if you uh, have picked something like that and you think that it doesn't have any real effect, um, then a different skill would be a better thing to have picked. I also, I'm just wondering, do we have um, too many skills at the moment? The skill system, in my opinion, should have some interesting choices, and they should be... Um, Trade-offs. Um, we shouldn't get everything, I think, even eventually. There should be trade-offs to be made along the route. So that you could play the game again with the same characters, but with different builds, so that the, it wouldn't actually play exactly the same. It would have uh, different tactical opportunities, or different... Um, yeah, different tactics would be required, uh, even though you're playing essentially the same characters, but you're using different skill sets. So the way you approach the fights and the way you it would have a substantial or significant impact on the um, the nature of the combat and the tactical encounters. 
So in summary, my modest list of wants and desires is that I would like to be able to access the inventory at least at the start of combat, or else not see the party and inventory button and the thing at all uh, during the combat to remind me that I have tough luck, that I was uh, out of luck. Um, I am wondering about that kick not moving things. I'd prefer to reliably move things and reliably have the opportunity of stun attacks. Um, I would like to be able to change the initiative order for the duration of a fight or maybe even for, for I suppose I could disassemble and reassemble the party. Maybe that would change the initial order, but that seems to be a very complicated way of going about it. It should be just a simple matter of setting the turn order for the characters, depending on the way you want it. Um, I would like to see some more work on abilities. Um, more abilities and choices, meaningful choices between abilities and an ability to rebuild the characters. I think that would be actually a huge positive um, thing for the game. Um, smoke bombs. I want better smoke bombs. I like smoke bombs, but I want better smoke bombs. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get better smoke bombs, but I would like them. So that is the uh, list there. Um, the other thing that I've um, tried out at the end of this combat is the uh, rain effect. Um, I did set off a fireball. Mostly to see the rain effect, quenching it, because uh, I've picked the rain effect for um, Dawn. And it seems to be a whole map uh, effect. Um, I just must try it again now at some stage, maybe earlier in the combat, to see what effect it has on things like kicking, uh, charges, uh, force movement and stuff uh, in general. Because the kicking, yeah, the kicking behaved kind of different to what I was used to. A couple of items, um, the like, a, I had a barrel break, I had a a, a not move, I had a rock break and not move uh, from a kick effect. So that was um, unexpected, and I don't know whether it's um, but the, we're supposed to be the stage of development of the game. You don't know whether these things are intentional or whether that's uh, the way they're meant to be, or whether it's just. Um, and it's an effect of the characters leveling up and just becoming more powerful. So the kick effect, the kick is becoming actually less effective in some ways because it's uh, doing more damage and not, and not enough slidey stunning. So anyway, I did manage to find Fort Triumph. I did manage the first encounter in Fort Triumph. Um, this seems like an interesting. It doesn't hasn't resolved any of the plot arcs just yet so thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please give it a like and a share if you've not already done so please subscribe i'll catch you all soon bye for now